Before we get started with today's video, I want to go over something real quick. I've had a few comments that have brought this to light. About three months ago, I changed the whole design of all my eBuzz Central web pages, whether it be my YouTube channel, whether it be my store. I changed it over to what I thought was a more subdued look with the, the purple and white. But what I didn't notice and take into account, and this was totally by accident, and I've had a few um, commenters actually point it out, was that my thumbnails now are starting to look like another Linux YouTuber's channel. So, first of all, I'm just basing it off my logo and the colors that I have in my logo. But at the same time, I don't want to seem that I'm impersonating somebody. So, today we're going to do the video and I'm going to put my second intro that I ever had on this channel in. And I want you guys to comment. Should I go back to what I had or just stick with what I got? Now, on to the OS that we're going to look at today. I love covering operating systems that take Arch and make it easy to use for the user. I'm going to have people that tell me, hey, if you want to use Arch, just use Arch. But this operating system, every time I seem to look at it, every time it comes out with an update, becomes more and more impressive. So that's what we're going to cover today on eBuzz Central. Before we start the video today, I just want to remind everybody, whether you're a supporter of the channel or a viewer of the channel, to zip on over to my Patreon page. You don't have to be a patron to take a look at this, but if you scroll down when you go to the page, there is a video down here called 10,000 Subscribers Patrons Only. That is an awesome video. You need to watch it. I'm doing something really special for all of you that support me and for those of you who could become supporters in the future. So if you get a chance, when you get done watching this video, zip on over there. Like I said, scroll down to where it says 10,000 subscribers, and that's the video you want to watch. And while I have you all, I want to tell you thank you so much for re helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. Never thought I would be here. You guys have done so much for this channel, and I look forward to continually providing content that you like and welcoming new viewers to my channel. Once again, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. You really don't know what it means to me. So now let's get to the video. And the operating system that we're taking a look at today is Blue Star Linux. Now, they're not real fancy. This is their web page. Pretty much everything you need to find, you can find on SourceForge. It's an Arch-based distribution, and it's going to have the most up-to-date kernel that is available. And it's built with the understanding that people want and need a solid operating system that provides a breadth of functionality and ease without sacrificing aesthetics. Blue Star is actually offered in three separate editions. You've got Desktop, Desk Pro, and Developer. And they're each tailored to address whatever needs that you might need. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is just the desktop version. So that way, if you look at it and like it and want to give it a try, you can, and then if you want the Desk Pro or the developer, you can choose it and download it. And like I said, it's over on SourceForge. You've got summary, files, reviews, and what I will do is include this link in the description below, so that way you can get more information about it. So now, let's zip on over to the actual desktop. So if you download Blue Star Linux, throw it on a USB or open it in a virtual machine, and boot into it, here is the desktop you're met with. It's a very beautiful desktop. I actually enjoy the layout of it. I enjoy the dock down at the bottom and I enjoy being able to access my folders from right here. Now this might bother some people because there's some people out there that do like to have a clean desktop and not a lot of clutter on it. For me, I like to have things quick and accessible. So this right here, this widget, it might be something you decide to, you know, take off your screen. But I do suggest that if you're somebody that has a heavy workflow and you're in and out of your file manager quite a bit, that this is something you might want to just leave and give it a shot. Now, right off the bat, I love the search functionality on it. I can just start typing on the home screen and it brings up everything that I need right there. I can look up settings. So let's go ahead and click on that. And there are your settings right there. It brings you into your KDE settings. Those are very familiar to those that use KDE. Right now we're going to look at About System, and it shows that it's Arch Linux. You're running KDE Plasma 5.25.2, so that's the most recent release. Some of the bugs are fixed in this one, so I've used it quite a bit. 
and haven't had any issues. KDE Frameworks is 5.95, QT versions 5.15.5, kernel version 5.18.9-R1. This is actually updated since yesterday when I took a look at this because it was at 5.18.8 arch-1 using x11 graphics and then of course it lists your hardware down here so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and as you can see you've got the dock down here and then if you come up top you do have a panel but it's a hidden panel you just raise up and it pops out for you now what I do want to do is I want to see if I want to turn that off I don't think it's going to make much of a difference because I think I was having an issue with being able to see it earlier. And on the latte dock, I want to go ahead and see if I can open it up. Let's enter edit mode. And the first thing I want to do is I do want to make the dock a little bigger. So we're on 32. I think I'll run it up to 40. I think I do like that right there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And if you come down on the dock, you do have show desktop. You've got your four workspaces here. So let's go ahead and open up Dolphin. And now what I do like about the theme that they're using is it is a dark theme but it's not too overwhelmingly dark yeah i like it's just more subdued and you can still see and get things done pretty easily i'm not going to spend a lot of time on dolphin you guys have heard me talk about it quite a bit usual suspects over here you got your home folders right here i just do enjoy the theme that they've used and then if we come back down to the bottom let's go ahead and open up a terminal and let's go ahead and maximize that so you all can see it. And I'm going to run an H top. And let's go ahead and maximize that up so you can see what it's using. Right now, I have two CPUs issued to this machine and two gigabytes of RAM. That's it. Uh, we're using about one gig of RAM at rest and a little under 5% of the CPU at rest. So it's utilizing the resources that I've issued to it very well. Like I said, one gigabyte's not much. Um, there are going to be people out there that say, hey, that's way too heavy. But in my opinion, if you want something with a little bit of eye candy and something that looks this good, you're definitely going to enjoy you giving up that one gigabyte of RAM. So let's go ahead and close out of the console. Let's close that window. Let's go back up top. You come up here. You do have your drop down. It's got your clipboard. You got sound, internet, USB, battery remaining volume and then your night color control and then of course octopi let's go ahead and click on that and what that is is your update notifier and it shows that you got 122 packages that need to be updated we're not going to do that at present because i am in a virtual machine so let's close out of that and then you come over here you've got your calculator right there if you need a quick calculator it drops down you got your time and then of course your application menu now, what I do notice is that it does come with uh, GIMP out of the box. A lot of your KDE applications also come with it, Color Paint, K Photo Album, and it does come with LibreOffice out of the box. You have FileZilla, Firefox, Conqueror, KTorrent, Multimedia. You got a couple different multimedia players. Like I said, LibreOffice out of the box. And then it doesn't come completely stripped. You get a few applications. To get you started so that makes things a little bit easier and then utilities lost and found let's go ahead and come back down to the bottom there's your gimp vlc firefox pigeon system settings now i do want to show you something that's really cool on this distribution and there are other ones out there that do it but i do like the fact that you can come over here and they've got a lot of pre-packaged desktop looks you got like the black arch look and then You've got a BMW and you can come over here and just click on it once, switch it up. And if you want to apply all the desktop layouts, you just click apply it and it transfers everything over. So I do like that. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's take a look at switching the background. Let's go down here. There's let's just go black. Let's apply. And there's Arch Linux logo. I always love that wallpaper. Now. What we are going to do is take a look at Octopi. This right here is the way you're going to add and remove software from your operating system. I really like Octopi. It really makes me feel like I'm using Synaptic. Back when I used to use my Linux Mint or Ubuntu years ago, I loved Synaptic Package Manager. Even when they came out with a software center that made things easier, I still use Synaptic. But right here, this is where you come 
to look at a bunch of different applications. You can come in here and do a search. Once you do that search, you can click apply the search, download the software and install it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Okay. Last but definitely not least is the Blue Linux installer. It does use a version of Calamares. Because I'm in Virtual Machine, we're not going to go through this step by step. I have covered this in previous videos, so I'm pretty sure if you're used to watching my channel, you've seen it before. But it's a rather simple installer. It's step by step. It's easy to use. The only thing that you have different here is look and feel. And what this does is gives you the opportunity to kind of adjust the way everything's going to look after you install it. And then you've got summary, install, and finish. Basically, guys, if you're somebody that's been wanting to try Arch out but not take the time to install it, Arch does have their own easy way to install now. I did a video on that not too long ago. But this is something that gives you eye candy with Arch right out of the box. And like I said, every time I've looked at the newest release of this operating system, it just keeps getting better and better. Let me know what you think. Is this something you might throw on a USB? or download and throw in a virtual box and take for a test drive, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, you can become a member right here on YouTube, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, buy us a coffee, or throw us a donation on PayPal. I would also like to thank today's video sponsors, producer Miss La Cresta, Mitchell Valentino, VIP sponsors Matthew Gower, Antoine Wilk, all excess sponsors are Eugene Lee, Leonard McQueen, Mike DePolis, and sponsors and members, Nitrix, Cato Gosted, Chad Jones, and Keith Hefner. If you liked today's video, here's a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source. Sometimes I might do a little Windows bashing. Once again, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.